Hello everyone, this is Jill with Om Shanti Healing. In this video, we're going to do a gentle yoga sequence to open the hips and chest and stretch out through our tight joints. So let's begin. So before you begin any yoga practice, you wanna take a moment of mindfulness. So let's just give ourselves a moment to take a couple deep breaths. And we want to take a deep inhalation in through the belly and guide that breath up into the chest. So think about working from your sacral chakra up into your heart energy. Breathe in a deep breath in. And exhale. Push the breath out, releasing any tension that you can. And another couple deep breaths. So the idea here is to give ourselves this moment to Get out of our headspace, the monkey mind that's very distractive and pulls us out of presence. And we want to go into our body and be more attuned into the spine, to the shoulder girdle, to the pelvic girdle, and throughout. From nose to toes, we want to have a deep engagement of the body so we can be more mindful in our movements. We can breathe into the body in specific areas, guiding energy. And also increase stamina and integrity in the asana. So we take that moment, breathe in and out. Okay, so let's begin from there. Let's take the right leg forward. So we're gonna sit in a Sukhasana style position or an Indian style type position. And we're gonna come into a forward fold with a breath in. We want a forward pelvic tilt. So we come forward with the pelvis first and let the spine elongate as we walk our arms front in front of us. So the idea here is when we move from the hip joint, we want to encourage that pelvic tilt forward and back or laterally as far as moving into that space. So think of the pelvis as a bowl and we want to fill that bowl up of water, with water and then we either want to pour out the front of that pelvic bowl or pour out the back of the pelvic bowl. So that allows us to get deep into the hip joint when we start the fold and gives us more of a pull sensation as we come forward. So breathe in, maybe we can lengthen a little bit, lengthening the spine always, kind of reaching away from the pelvis. Exhale a little more tilt to the pelvis and come down maybe a little bit farther into your fold. And let's hold right here for three deep breaths. So we want to tune into that belly breath, just encouraging as much expansion around the abdomen and around the lower part of the rib cage as we can. And let's walk our hands over to the left. So we're going to take our hands just over here this way and we want to just come as far over as we comfortably can. What it's going to do is it's going to increase the pull on this right side. So we want to hold here changes the stretch. It kind of moves above the hip joint a little bit, more into the hip flexors and abductor muscles that we need when we lift that knee off of the ground. Okay. Hold there. Another deep breath. And on the exhale, let's come back to center. So coming out of the fold, pelvis tilts back. We engage the core. We round up to the top. Good, let's take that right leg out to the side. So we're coming into a diagonal here. Toes pull back a little bit on the extended side to encourage more space down the back of the leg. So let's again fold forward. Breath in, we create space. Pelvis first, exhale, and then let the spine lead the way. And we always want that neck to follow through with where the thoracic part of our spine is going, unless otherwise intentionally moving into some more depth and turning the head on purpose, we want to let that alignment follow through. So we breathe in, another deep breath, reach, little pelvic tilt, exhale, come down, and let your arms rest in front of you so your shoulders can be dropped. And we hold here. Let's stay here for three more. So as we're tuning into the body, we're breathing into specific areas. 
We want to put intentionality into that space that we're trying to open up, right? We focus with intention, we breathe in to fill up that space, and then that exhale provides us a little bit of release. Each time, with focus, with intention, we can make that happen. So let's exhale, we round, tilt the pelvis back, and come back up to the top. Very good. Right leg comes in, let's bring the left leg in front. Breath in, we lift. Exhale, pelvis tilts forward, and we come through. The spine follows, the neck stays very neutral, and we come down. So the hands are in front so our shoulders can stay nice and relaxed. We're here for support. And the idea isn't perfection. We don't need to be aesthetically perfect, right? That's not the point. The point is to create as much depth in what we're doing as we comfortably can in our body and allow that space to be a safe haven for growth. So we want to stay very comfortable and relaxed as we're working into these tight hips, just giving ourselves those moments to breathe in, fill up the hip, exhale, release tension, little by little. And as you continue to do more yoga and practice, it, you'll get better at it. So let's walk it over to the right. Just like with anything that we practice in life, right? We practice, we get better. We're not going to be perfect at anything when we're, when we're brand new. Okay? So we feel that pull move up into the left hip. We feel it intensify as we're moving away from that side of the body. And we hold here. Let's stay for a couple deep breaths. Come back to center. Pelvis tilts back. We round and we roll up to the top. Left leg out to a diagonal. So we're pulling those toes back a little bit, creating some space through the back of the leg. Inhale, we lift up. Pelvis tilts first and we come forward. Getting right into the crease of that hip, feeling that pull from all the way at the top of those hamstrings and adductors. And we're letting that spine follow through. So we want to make sure that neck again stays neutral. I see a lot of heads pulling forward with beginning um, yoga practitioners because that gives us the illusion that we're deeper into a fold and so forth. But if we want to keep the neck neutral, we want to keep the neck safe and happy, and then we can move from the hip to deepen the stretch. And we don't need to force ourselves into anything that's uncomfortable. Okay. Let's hold here for two more. Good. Let's round and come back up to the top. Very nice. Left leg's going to come back into center. So let's come up to a tabletop position. So this is a crawling position. So we want to have the shoulders over the wrists. The middle finger leads off the front of the mat. And then we set up our knees underneath the hips. So we're hips width apart. Now as we move into cat cow, this is a gentle one for opening the back and also opening up through the chest. We want to begin on the inhale with a heart forward position. So I'm turning my chest to the front of the mat, which is going to let my belly drop, and then my tail goes up. And again, we want to think pelvic bowl, pouring out the front of the pelvic bowl. So we're holding here for a posterior contraction, and we're feeling that stretch all the way down the abdomen. We want to feel it from the bottom of our rib cage down to the pubic bone. And maybe the first time we come into it, we don't feel it. Maybe the second time we'll feel a little bit more. Now as we exhale, we're going to tilt the pelvis back. So that starts in the, around the hip joints. We're tilting back. We feel that contraction in the front. And we're going to open up the lower spine. 
and roll up to the top. So we feel the shoulder blades spreading apart. I'm rooted through my arms and I'm lifting up and out of my shoulder joints. And then on the inhale, heart forward. So typically when you're flowing through cat-cow, you breathe in uh, in this position as the front of your body is open. And then you breathe out in this position as you exhale and tighten up the front body and push the breath out. So let's move with a couple breaths as we go. Inhale, top to bottom, shoulder to pelvis. And then on the exhale, pelvis to shoulder, we roll all the way up to top. Let's do a couple more. With an inhale, heart forward. And I'm always correcting because there is this momentum to push back as on the exhale, where a lot of times we'll come out of that alignment right here. So we're always kind of being mindful and correcting that exhale and lift. One more time, inhale. And an exhale, round and lift. Good. Come back to tabletop. Let's bring the right leg forward. So we want to line up the knee so it's underneath our ankle. That left leg is going to slide back. If you need extra cushioning, you can easily roll over the edge of your mat and you have another layer of padding right there. Okay, so here. We're going to open up the hips. We're just sinking in, giving ourselves a moment here to feel out how the left side is feeling in the front and how the right side is feeling in the back, creating lots of space for opening up the front of the pelvis here on this left side. So let's hold here for two more. Now think about pelvic girdle, up and back, hamstrings on the right side. So let's walk the hands back so they're under the shoulders and we always have those joints in alignment. And we're anchoring the right hip to the back of the mat. So I'm pulling a little bit that way and then locking the pelvis in place with the rounded spine. Inhale, reach forward through the crown of your head. So we're finding spinal length here. And then exhale, sinking down into your fold. So ideally, we have our toes on the mat, especially that big toe. So check in there. And you'll feel as you soften your toes, you don't feel it quite as much in the hamstrings and through the adductors. And then when you press your toes, it creates an isometric contraction where that, those muscles back there are lengthening and they're contracting at the same time as we're pushing and creating action in the muscles there. So let's hold there two more. Good. Pelvis forward, up and forward, back into lunge. Sink into it. Kind of feel how you're feeling on this left side. Is there a little bit more space than there was before? Good. Let's add on right hand to right above the knee. So we're going to push down into this leg a little bit. Lengthen inhale. Find your twist right behind your navel. And we twist as we gently press into that right leg. We twist to the inside of the thigh. So this is going to get a little deeper into the left side. You can allow that left side of the pelvis to drop a little bit and twist towards the inside of the thigh. We're holding here for breath. Let's stay for two more. Good. Exhale. Back down. Both hands to the ground. And we're going to step it back. Good. Let's bring that mat back to flat. We'll fold over the side. And we'll bring our hips over the heels. So here we can rock a little bit and just sway and feel the change around that left side. Take a couple deep breaths in. 
We take these moments of stillness as we transition to the other side sometimes to give you an opportunity to check in with your breathing, to come back to that belly breath if you've lost track, and to bring your brain back into the room if you've kind of wandered off with your focus. Let's come back up to table. Left leg forward. So right leg is going to slide back, fold over the mat if you need a little extra layer. All right, so we're sinking in. We're feeling a lot through this right side. We're allowing the hips to feel a little bit heavy here. And we're feeling those pelvic muscles in the front, the hip flexors, the quads, all lengthening out on this right side. Feeling a lot of depth here. Let's hold for three more. Belly to heart. Chakra, sacral chakra to heart chakra. We breathe in and out. Good, one more. Good, now as we come back, think about the pelvic bowl. Up and back. Okay, my left hip is pulling towards the back of the mat a little bit, creating more length through those hamstrings. And then I'm going to lock the pelvis in place. Push my toes down, slide my hands back if you need to. Inhale, reach. So my spine's lengthening, I'm reaching forward and exhale, bend at the elbows and sink down into a little bit more depth. Holding here. Two more. My back's rounded, my belly is pulled up towards my lower spine to create some more stabilization in the pose. Exhale, forward back to lunge. Good, so we're sinking down. Maybe we feel a little bit more space in the front. We stretched it, we let it relax, and then we move back in. So let's bring the left hand to the same spot on the other side. So we're going to be placing that hand just above the, the knee joint at the end of the thigh. Press downward into the floor a little bit. Inhale, lengthen, and exhale, find your twist. So we're turning to the inside of the thigh. This right side is feeling quite a deep pull in the front here. And we're holding here two more. Good, breath in. And on the exhale, we'll come back down. Pelvis up and back. Good. And we'll take that left leg back. Let's unroll the mat back to flat. Bring your knees out to the edges of the mat and bring your toes together. So we're deepening the hips a little bit here, comparably to the first devotion we went into. And then we're going to reach the arms out nice and long and let the ribs drop through the thighs. We're going to enjoy a nice stretch here for the hips. And you can also rock a little back and forth if that feels good around your hip joints. We're going to hold here for two more. Inhale, back up to table. Walk your knees back in so they're underneath your hips. And we're going to curl the toes, walk the hands backwards, and the knees will pop up off of the floor. So let's bring the big toes together so they're touching, and then we're going to bring the heels together so they're touching. And let the hips open up nice with a lot of external rotation, and we drop down a little bit into our tailbone. So we're going to walk the arms forward. You can bring a block in if you need it here for underneath the forearms. And we're letting the heels drop towards the floor. And we're thinking like we've got a heavy weight hanging from the tailbone. And we're dropping back. So this is going to get deep into the inner thighs as we're stretching from the pelvic floor down to just past the inside of our knee joint getting those abductor muscles, the inner thigh muscles that get very tight and short as we're moving around throughout our day. And we're feeling a deep contraction behind us there around the sacrum. Let's 
Let's hold here for two more. And clearly those lateral legs are working very hard here as we're holding ourselves stable. Good. Inhale, back up. Knees come back to center. Good. And let's find tabletop again. Good. Inhale, heart forward. Drop your navel. Pour out the front of the bowl. Exhale, round. And lift. Good. One more time. Inhale. Heart forward. Deep breath in here. And exhale. Deep breath out to open up that spine. Good. Let's work on thread the needle. Right arm's going to come up. We find a twist here. Exhale through. So my right arm's coming under my left. And we're dropping down onto the back of the shoulder back there, resting the head on the floor. Left arm comes up to the top. We're going to inner spiral at the shoulder. Bring that arm around your back and reach for your shirt or for the crease of your hip. I can't quite get there on my right side with this shoulder. So we're letting that right or that left shoulder drop down and back. So we can feel a comfortable pull down the bicep. And then we feel that trap dropping away from the ear. Let's hold for two more. Right side, we feel an opening through the back of the shoulder and the tricep. Very gentle stretch there. Inhale, left arm up, bring it around back to the front, palm to the ground. And we press back up to a tabletop position. Now let's do the left arm. Inhale up. Find a nice twist here below our ribs. Exhale through. And we come down on this side. Triceps, infraspinatus, supraspinatus, and rhomboids here on this side. Right arm up. Inner spiral. Bring it around back. Reach for the crease of your hip on this side. Let the right shoulder Drop down and back. And we hold here. Let's stay for two more. Good. Right arm, inhale up, bring it around to the front, hand to the ground, and we press back up. Walk your hands forward. Now let's stretch out the legs. Bring your knees, keep your knees down on the ground. Let the pelvis drop. So we're pressing up and back here. A nice belly stretch. Getting a sense of balance of the upper body here. Upward facing dog. Good. Exhale, tighten your tummy. Like think pinching your belly button closed. Up and back with the hips and over the heels we go. Arms are stretched out. Take a moment here. Good. Back to top of a push up here. So we're going to set up, bring the legs back. Now you can modify by bringing your knees down onto the ground to make it a little bit easier for you. Otherwise, we're going to curl the toes, lift up. So we see this, we don't want this. We see that, we don't want that. We want to have a nice flowing diagonal line from your shoulder down to the heel. Okay? Hold here. Exhale down. Elbows scrape the ribs. We press back up to the top. Knees to the ground, hip over heel, and take a breath. Good. Inhale, back up. Keeping your knees down on the ground or lifting to full plank. One more time, one push up. Breath in, exhale down, scrape the sides. Inhale up, knees to the ground, and hip over heel. And let's 
Let's come forward onto our belly. And we'll turn onto our right, our left side. So you can bring the arm alongside your ear. So your head has somewhere to rest there. So we're thinking lat here. So let's bring the arm up and over. So we work this area with our push-ups. We're gonna bend the elbow and bring that hand palm up to the floor behind your head. Now you can bring the arm behind the head for more depth. We're bending this left elbow and placing the hand to the back of the upper arm and applying downward pressure. So we're thinking about the lateral edge of that shoulder blade. One that lines up underneath your armpit there. We're going to try to soften that area the best that we can by creating some space with breath. So we're going to breathe right into that spot and let the exhale bring a little softness, bring a little release. A couple more. This is targeting the lat. We're stretching very much. And we're getting into the triceps here. The posterior deltoid is being stretched on this one. Good. We're getting a little pull at the infraspinatus as well. That's the muscle that lays over the top of your shoulder blade below the spine. Gets very tender and stuck on the body. Pretty common thing. So my knees are slightly bent so my hips can stay relaxed. My low body is very heavy feeling right now. And I'm just very much focused at the top here around the shoulder. Almost breathing in deep to that scapular bone. Getting into that subscap muscle, breathing into it. And allowing a little softening as I exhale. Decreasing tension. Good. One more deep breath in. And out. Very good. Now let's do a counter because that was contracting that upper trap quite a bit. So let's stretch that area out now and we're going to contract this area down the lat and the ribs. So we're going to take the ankle and ideally our legs are stacked so they can remain relaxed. We're going to apply a gentle bit of pressure into the hand with our foot. Not a very not very much at all. You might just have the weight of your leg in your hand and that's enough. So now let's think the right shoulder is going to pull down away from the ear. And then that shoulder blade on the right side is going to slide towards your spine. So what that's going to do is open up across your collarbone. We're stretching the pec major minor here. We're getting the anterior deltoid, which is the front of the shoulder here. We're getting down the biceps. Good. Very nice. And let's let that foot drop a little bit closer to the floor. And we're holding here for stretch. Now you can add on a little rotation of the head by looking down at the floor. And that will change the trap stretch a little bit for you. You'll feel how the muscles in the neck feel a little different here as we rotate. And down that trap feels a little different. And then we're going to look up. And when we look up, let's lift the chin. Yes, definitely feeling that. Good. Let's hold here for two more. Breathing all the way up into the chest. Good. Very nice. And we're going to release that leg. So let the hand just rest at your thigh. A couple little soft shoulder circles there. <clears throat> and 
And I'm going to flip around so I'm facing you for the other side. So we'll take the right arm along the ear. And we have soft knees so we can keep nice and relaxed at the low body. Okay, so let's get the left trap. We're going to bring our arm up and over. So we're bending the elbow and bringing that arm behind the head. Right elbow will bend and we'll take the back of the arm. Apply some gentle pressure downward. Good, so we're thinking very much lateral, lateral border of that scapula. We're going to breathe right up into the back of the shoulder joint, filling up that whole area. And letting the exhales bring a little release. Set intention as you move your energy to fill up and create expansion as you breathe in. And then as you breathe out, we soften, we surrender, right? We allow those tight stuck muscles to release a little bit with our breath and with moving our energy and setting the focus in that spot. And it works and it may not work to your full advantage the first couple times, but keep trying, you'll get it, and it will come to you. Okay, let's stay here for three more. Uh, yes, feels so nice to get this area. This is my stuck spot back there. That's where I need work done the most. We're going to take the ankle. Okay, relaxed knees, relaxed hip. Maybe the weight of your leg is all you need. You don't need to push anymore. Let's think about this left shoulder pulling away from the ear. And then we're going to take that shoulder blade and slide it towards the spine. So we will feel stretch across the pec here. We'll feel it along the collarbone. We'll feel it right where the collarbone meets the shoulder joint. All of this area is pec. And there's tendon that comes all the way from that corner, wrapping around the shoulder, and it comes down into that pec that creates a lot of tension and tightness with our arms forward lifestyle. We're all tight there. We all have soreness there. We all have restriction there. So let's open it up. Let's move that heart energy, get some good flow through this area. And we feel that anterior delt stretching. We feel down the biceps, creating some space through the upper arm. That foot drop back behind you a little bit more. If you have any more room to go, depending on how you're built and your flexibility, you may be able to take it a little bit farther. Let's hold here for two more deep breaths. We'll turn our head towards the floor while we're here. We're going to stay a few more so we can get those head rotations in. So as we look down, we feel very clearly where that stretch is pulling from the most. And then let's look up. So here we want to lift the chin. Make sure you keep that length up the side of the neck. And we very much feel that trap change as we turn the head. And we twist the top of that trap a little bit, the sensation changes. <clears throat> we hold there. Good. And let's release. Let that leg go. Bring your hand to your hip. A little soft roll of the shoulder. We feel that loosening in there. We feel much better. And press up to a seated position. So let's meet at Sukhasana where we began. Take a couple deep breaths. Good. 
So this was gentle yoga for hips and shoulders. Bring your arms up, hands together at the top. Exhale, hands to heart center. Om Shanti, Namaste.